So I will be talking about uh, annotation, uh, manual annotation that is, as we not really, well, developed in a way, but basically promote in the Slovenian Clarin. Uh, lots of uh, co-authors, uh, quite a few of them are here as well, and if you have some tricky questions, I hope they'll be able to answer them. Um, okay, so short overview, I'll give you a bit of an introduction. Uh, quite uh, a bit of the content of the talk is really devoted to TI uh, and how to integrate that with manual, uh, manual annotation. I'll tell you about the platform that we use and, and that's the main thing here, right? That's what we uh, developed is how to convert from the text encoding initiative guidelines into the web anno format and more importantly back again. And I will uh, mention some use cases, some annotation campaigns that we already made. So, uh, as I'm sure you all know, manually annotated corpora are quite important. They're a basic language resource, given uh, the focus on Clarin, mostly on humanities. Maybe I should start with linguistics. Uh, if you want to research a particular phenomenon and automatic tools are not good enough, they make too many mistakes, they miss out too many cases, uh, you are forced to do manual annotation for some exact linguistic uh, quantitative analysis. And... Uh, it might be that automatic tools actually don't even exist for a particular phenomenon. In that case, you're absolutely forced to do manual annotation. Uh, the other use case is, of course, human language technologies, where nowadays any annotate, almost all uh, annotation tools depend on machine learning, and for that you, of course, need a uh, manually annotated corpus. Uh, but even though it's not machine learning, you still need some manual gold standard corpora for, for testing then to see how well you're doing. Uh, so, uh, lots of motivation here why we need a good platform to do it. Um, so that's the first question, right? How we should do this? Uh, what platform to use, workflow and so on? And the other annotation is how to store them then in a common, in a standard format. So, say we can deposit them into our repositories. Uh, so, text encoding initiative, I'm sure uh, most of you know what it is. Uh, it's kind of the most comprehensive set of guidelines, uh, more or less a de facto standard on how to encode various types of texts for various or various types of uh, interpretative information over, over texts uh, in the humanities. They are less used uh, for, I would say, also historical reasons in human language technologies or computational linguistics. Uh, but even here we have uh, quite a few cases uh, to the contrary. For instance, the Polish National Corpus uses TI, some others. I would also say that TI is quite nicely suited for Clarin because it kind of spans this humanities, computational science uh, divide. You can do both in it. And uh, again, for various historical reasons in Slovenia, it's become a kind of de facto standard. Most of our important corpora at least are encoded in TI, so Gigafida is the reference, one billion reference corpus of Slovene. Uh, GOS is the corpus of spoken Slovene. Uh, IMP is a rather large corpus of historical Slovene. Jan is a corpus of uh, computer-mediated communication, so Slovene on Twitter uh, and so on. Mm. We also have digital editions encoded in TI, lexica, and so on, so more humanities uh, resources as well. Uh, the typical annotation levels from a human language technology perspective that we uh, encode in TI are, of course, tokens and sentences. Uh, interesting uh, 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 level of annotation are normalized words. This is something we use in historical corpora or in CMC corpora, where you want to first normalize a word. In, order to be able then to tag them and lemmatize them, but also search for them. Um, part of speech tags, lemmas, and so on, right? The kind of the standard stack of, of annotations. Uh, one, another thing I should mention here, which is quite important in the context of this talk, uh, the, the, almost all tools nowadays use standoff annotations. So you have your base text somewhere, and then a tool uh, does the annotation not on the base text, but uh, it does it on a separate layer, and you have just pointers into the base text. This has become uh, a standard way for tools to operate. Why? You can encode arbitrary relations via po pointers. Uh, it's very simple to implement, uh, and it's very tool-friendly. So you don't, you don't kind of touch the base text, right? You just point into it and do whatever you want to do with your tool. Uh, however, this has 
some drawbacks as well, mm, which is why prefer, we prefer, at least for manual annotation, inline annotation. So all the tags, uh, attributes, elements, uh, they are actually in the base text. Uh, this is complicated, not tool friendly, and you cannot encode arbitrary relations. At least you have to kind of do some workarounds to do that. Um, but, and that's the important thing, you can actually uh, then change, you can correct the, the base text or the lower level annotations. In the context of manual annotation, this is very important because what often happens is that when you're doing, say, part of speech tags, you still notice errors in, say, tokenization and you want to correct them if you want to have a gold standard corpus. Uh, and the other thing is it's much easier to validate. Uh, because you can use the XML schema directly for validation. Down here you have an example of this. Uh, the first two words are kind of straightforward, right? They just have a lemma and a uh, part of speech tag. Uh, the third one is more complicated because it is actually a slang word, meaning uh, I, I would. Um, but in slang it's written together, whereas in uh, standard Slovene it's written apart, so it it kind of decomposes into two words, and those are the words that get then the annotation. Okay, so moving on to the platform, uh, what we chose to use is uh, Web Anno. Uh, here's just so you get an impression what a, a screen looks like. It's uh, been developed at the Technical University of Darmstadt for quite a while now. So why did we choose it? It, uh, the development was supported by Clarin D, so that's kind of uh, really nice, right? It's all in under the Clarin umbrella. It's an open source system. It's developed on GitHub, which is good as well. So you can post, not only can you get it from there, but you can post issues and so on. Uh, it supports all sorts of types of annotations that people need uh, for various projects. So you can annotate one token, a span. You can do link annotations for syntax. You also have various types of values then over these annotation layers. So you can do stacked annotations and multi-valued annotations. Uh, quite importantly, it nicely supports annotation by a team of annotators. So two or three annotators are annotating the same text, and then you have a curation step afterwards if you want really perfect corpora. That's uh, really important. Uh, has been so far fairly well maintained. I'm not sure what the, what the future is here, but I hope it will continue to be maintained for a long time. As far as its input-output format goes, it has a XML standoff. Uh, markup. Um, it also kind of supports state, but not really. Uh, and it has various tabular formats as well. One of them is called TSV, and that's the one we use. So we decided to use Webano, and we also organized a couple of tutorials on this end of uh, last year. So in the context of some other project and with colleagues from Croatia and Serbia, we went around Zagreb and Belgrade and gave uh, tutorials on, on how to use Webano. Uh, the annotation workflow. So the first thing we do is convert our TI resource to TSV. I'll skip over these details here, uh, although they caused us 90% of the problems really with the, with the conversion. Uh, then once you have the TSV, you, we upload it into Webano. The a manual annotation campaign takes place. You download TSV. And then number five is the really tricky step is how to merge uh, the manually annotated corpus back into the source TI. Uh, each project needs some metadata or data. Well, of course, in the first place, the, the actual source. Uh, each project will then, we will write some annotation guidelines for the annotators. You need to technically set up the project in Webano, which means you have to define the annotation layers, their tag sets. Uh, you give usernames to annotators and upload the uh, TSV documents. And then for the conversion itself, we have one XML configuration file which drives uh, the conversion in, in both directions. Uh, from TI to TSV is via XSLT. That's the simplest. Going back, a bit more complicated or a lot more complicated, we use Perl and uh, DOM. So this is an example configuration file uh, in its entirety. It's not very big. I, I'm not sure how much you can read it here, but basically this is how you define the, the little tricky bits and uh, the layers and their features. Uh, bells and whistles, so this is the complicated part. Uh, the first annotation campaign we had, we already uh, kind of, I like to do that, uh, complicated things. 
because we were um, what we wanted to do is get a gold standard corpus of Slovene CMC. And as you know, uh, people writing on Twitter and so on, they don't use punctuation, they don't use spaces, uh, and so on. So even a tokenizer has quite a few problems here. So we wanted to be able to correct tokenization. And that's always a problem, or with 95% of annotation tools, that is a problem, because tokens are taken as the atomic units which you then annotate, whereas here we are actually wanted to change uh, what a token is. So we made use of some special symbols and uh, multi-valued features and so on to be able to implement that. So in this case you have uh, where um, automatic to tokenization thought something is one token but is in fact two. Uh, it also got the sentence uh, segmentation wrong, so that's the first case where these things are corrected. And the other case is just the other way around where dot .si is actually supposed to mean the um, domain name for Slovenia, but the tokenizer split it into two, into two tokens, so manually we join them together. Uh, the use cases, we had quite a few by now. Um, the most extensive one was this essential annotation of Slovene computer-mediated content, uh, where we corrected tokenization, sentence segmentation, and normalization for about 8,000 uh, texts. I mean, tweets are texts too, right? Quite short ones, but still. Uh, in the first stage, in the second stage, we also added part of speech or MSD tags and lemmas. Uh, this is still ongoing, the second one. Uh, then there was, uh, in the scope of uh, PhD thesis um, on uh, speech corpora, on syntactic annotation of speech corpora, there was a uh, spoken, transcription of a spoken corpus uh, was also annotated in WebAnno. We started working on named entities for various types of Slovene, and there were some very kind of linguistic-oriented uh, uh, annotation campaigns as well, for instance, on comma placement, which is a very complicated thing in Slovene, how to write a comma uh, correctly. So, uh, conclusions. So, I presented how we use uh, WebAnno in combination with TEI at uh, the Slovenian Clarin. Uh, of course, everything is not perfect. Uh, annotators notice some things that they'd really like to have, but WebAnno doesn't, at least not currently. So, one thing is that you cannot actually search uh, in a project uploaded into WebAnno, which sometimes uh, would be very beneficial, for instance, to go back and check some annotations that have already been done, or to search for a particular phenomenon. But I appreciate that's quite difficult to integrate into a platform that's basically meant for annotation. Uh, something that would be easier to correct, probably, is to get some um, extra metadata and links into the web on sentences, that's kind of the basic unit that you're annotating there. Uh, so you can go and check into the original, say if, I don't know, if it's old Slovene, you can go and check in the facsimile or something, so that you would have some of this data uh, associated with particular sentences that you're annotating. Uh, there were various small bugs and crashes, but uh, kind of we're reporting these things um, on GitHub. And I'm not sure actually what the, what the future of WebAnno is. Again, I hope that this will continue to be supported uh, because even looking at GitHub, I see quite a few people are using it uh, in Europe, but also wider. Uh, a problem is this merge step. This is the really complicated stuff uh, that I mentioned before. So once you get your TSV, which might have been extensively modified, annotated, how do you annotate that with the original TI? Uh, and not get into these problems of uh, crossing hierarchies and, and things like that. Uh, so, white space tokenization here uh, can be an issue. Uh, and the whole workflow right now is kind of complicated. I think we should automate this uh, so we don't have to do everything manually. Uh, now, these extensions, or rather conversions to and from WebAnno, uh, we have been developing them on our copy at the Institute of GitLab, uh, which is really nice. I, I became a big fan of Git uh, doing this uh, because it offers you, well, I won't go into Git now, but anyway, a brilliant platform. Um, but uh, we probably will at some point migrate, I guess, to GitHub because there the whole thing is more public 
and it also gives us a opportunity then a better opportunity to share with others what we've been doing uh, right now it's just basically me and Cyprian two developers and then quite a lot of users already uh, but uh, as I say we'll be happy to uh, I mean, we are happy to share this, even though right now, of course, as always, these things are under document and so on. But yes, we'd be quite happy to, to get some new users and maybe also developers uh, into the whole process. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yes, there is one. I have two uh, small questions related to the application to the spoken um, language data. The first is what in the um, conversion process did you do with non-speech tokens like horses or descriptions of non-verbal um, things? And the second is in the process, annotation process itself when you needed access to um, the underlying recording, WebAnno doesn't really provide that, does it? Um, did you? Can you think of a solution for that? How did you handle this? Or did the need simply not arise in your case? Uh, these are really good questions. Unfortunately, I think, and she's also the only co-author that is not here now. Uh, it, this was uh, Kaya Dobrovolz that was doing this in the scope of her PhD thesis. So I don't really know the details, right? Uh, I know that, OK, uh, I'm not sure if the, the <clears throat> they already made quite exact uh, speech, uh, sorry, quite exact transcriptions of the spoken text. That was done before, manually checked, and so on. So uh, I'm not sure if there was actually a need to go back into the original recording. Um, might have been. On the other hand, this whole corpus is available on the internet uh, via a concordancer, which also enables you to actually listen to the uh, to the actual recording, right? So that's there. You can search for whatever it is you're annotating and listen to the to the original. Uh, for these uh, kind of non-spoken uh, things or ellipsis uh, things that you were mentioning, uh, I don't think that was uh, annotated at all, right? Uh, what her PhD is quite concerned about are discourse particles, that's true, but also this uh, how syntax of spoken Slovene differs from syntax of standard Slovene. Uh, so I think she used the same principles and then, well, uh, PhD is discussing the differences, I would guess. Yeah. Um, so the amount of data that is, even for Slovenian, is of course increasing dramatically. So you probably cannot check everything manually. No, no, of course not. So uh, my yeah. question is, what is your strategy? Which, which data do you select to uh, to, uh, to annotate manually and do you have specific strategies? Uh, maybe you can find particularly complex data or complex automatically assigned annotations where you expect errors or something else, something, some other strategy? Uh, yeah, um, I would say two things. One is money, yeah, so if there is a project ongoing that is able to finance something, uh, then that of course gets a, gets a priority. This was the case with the CMC because we have a um, national research project that Daria Fischer is the, the lead in. Uh, and because we have a whole three-year project devoted to that, uh, this normalization, for instance, and we wanted to actually train tools to uh, tokenize, sentence segment, part of speech tag, normalize, lemmatize, uh, Slovene CMC as well as possible. That's why we devoted quite a bit of time and energy and money to pay the annotators to this particular uh, thing. Uh, the other thing is that Clarion also co-financing or finances some annotation campaigns. And this kind of depends. First of all, you need to have somebody that really has an interest in the topic, that they will be the, the motor for the whole, because it's a lot of work uh, having a, a comprehensive annotation campaign. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing is kind of the needs of, I would say, the HLT for Slovene. We want to have this like uh, Stephen um, had this Blark concept, right? The basic language resources toolkit. Uh, that is something we would like to have to cover the, the basic four or five levels of annotation, Slovene annotation, and hopefully not only for standard Slovene, but also for, on the one hand, historical, on the, on the other hand, CMC type of Slovene, right? So these were the things that we were concentrating in, uh, on. And in a couple of annotation campaigns also, uh, we just recently had that conference in Slovenia, so uh, a couple of four or five papers there were 
all in the same mold, basically, that uh, they wanted to explore a particular phenomenon, linguistic phenomenon, for, but for that they needed data, and they annotated this data in, in WebAnno. So we first said how we would sample the data, what we would take, so you get a nice little balanced, uh, well, more or less balanced corpus, uh, and then we went ahead and annotated it and analyzed the results. Uh, so this turns out to be quite popular, uh, a bit to my surprise, I have to say. Uh, at first I thought we would only use it for training uh, and testing data for HLT, but uh, li linguists like it as well. Maybe you can extend on this uh, linguist likes it very well. So because uh, you mentioned that there were um, workshops in Zagreb in, uh, and some mm -hmm. networking. I'm just wondering uh, whether you also would like to uh, show this uh, to other Clarin partners, like in Baltics and Nordic countries. And uh -huh. well, that's uh, certainly an interesting idea. Um, uh, I have to say this, Janis Express, this was a kind of happy uh, combination of projects. Um, there was this Janis project I already mentioned. Uh, we got then uh, some small amount of funding from our government to uh, popularize Slovene science abroad, basically. So that gave uh, some money. And there was this RELDI project uh, where Nikola Ljubesic from Zagreb uh, and Tanja Samarjic, uh, well, she's, she's actually in, in Switzerland, right? And this is a Swiss project. But the idea was to get Serbian and, and Croatian uh, tools and resources and so on, right? So three projects, uh, including Clarin, uh, four, uh, cooperated in order so we could make this whole thing happen. So we had this whole kind of roadshow moving along ex-Yugoslavia, yeah, and presenting Slovene resources. This was basically aimed at students uh, studying Slovene there at universities. And we also made these tutorials for WebAnno. So a lot of things kind of came together in a very nice way that we could do that. Uh, I mean, I guess we could present uh, it to others as well, but then again, WebAnno, it, it's not our thing, right? And it's, uh, there are tutorials on the web, uh, little movies and so on, and it's not really difficult to use. Uh, the difficult part that we introduced is basically this TI to WebAnno and back again thing, right? That's uh, uh, kind of, that was the point of this talk. Uh, but yeah. Thank you. More questions? If no, then thanks. Thomas? Thank you.